Hey everyone, it's Nikki, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart, which is Disney's Toontown Online, or Toontown Rewritten nowadays, now that the old game is no longer online. Disney's Toontown Online was made by Disney Interactive, Shell Games, and Frog Children Studios. It is a 3D MMORPG, and it was released on June 2nd, 2003. So for those who don't know, basically Toontown was a massive multiplayer online RPG, where you play as a toon, which are anthropomorphic animals that are the inhabitants of Toontown, like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and the like. So you play as a toon that is at war with these cogs, which are these robotic businessmen, essentially, that are trying to take over Toontown and take all the fun out of it. So, and you fight these cogs with gags because in order to destroy cogs, you need to get them laughing. So you use silly gags like a pie to the face or a squirt flower or dropping a piano on people. That's basically the gist of the game. There are a bunch of smaller tune tasks that help you gain laugh points, which are essentially your health as well as level up your gags and eventually fight boss battles against the various higher ups of the four cog types. There are also some mini games and hobbies you can take part in, such as gardening, fishing, and taking care of a pet doodle, which are these little jelly bean shaped creatures. But for for the most part, it's about combat against the cogs. So before I started talking about the technical elements of the game, I first wanted to start out with my favorite parts. So the first thing that I wanted to mention was I just love the old lore. I think this was retcon, but I remember playing the game in 2007 and this was still the story, the old story that would play when you were installing the game was that Scrooge McDuck came to Gyro Gearloose's lair trying to find his latest contraption when he accidentally releases the cogs onto Toontown. So I just thought that that was a neat tie into like the DuckTales universe. Another thing is that the combat is super fun. The combat is turn-based, which I'll get into more during the gameplay aspect of this review, but it's fun to just use these silly gags that just how they attack the cogs is hilarious. And the cogs have some pretty funny attacks too. There's a lot of wordplay involved and just puns and silly things that are just a lot of fun to interact with. Speaking of the combat, all four boss battles are really fun. The CJ may be a little bit less than the other three, but fighting the VP, CFO, CJ, and CEO, they have so many unique mechanics that are just a lot of fun and you get to play with a bunch of other people. So it's just, I really like the boss battles. Backtracking a bit to what you do before you start fighting the cogs, I really like the character design tool of this game. There aren't any sliders or anything, but there are, I think, between two to four heads per species with slightly different proportions, and then a couple different bodies and limb lengths. And I just really like how you can customize your tunes to be different colors, different heights, different weights, all of that kind of stuff. And you, so you can get some tunes that are relatively normal looking, and then you get some tunes that are absolutely ridiculous looking. And it's just a fun way to design your own character. While the graphics of this game have definitely not aged particularly well, so many of the animations that the cogs and tunes do, whether it's emotes or actual battle animation are super fun fun, super funny, like and just cute and I love them. Even if they clip all over the place, they're hilarious and I love them. <laughs> so because this is a children's game, there is a chat menu called Speed Chat where you can just click on things to say that are already predetermined, as well as Speed Chat Plus, which is where you can just type in your own messages with moderation. Speed Chat, there are some interesting phrases that you can say and you can also buy phrases in the like um, item catalog to add to your speed chat, which I've definitely bought some fun ones, but there are just some interesting, interesting speech bubbles that you can say during battle or just to random people around Toontown. So as I mentioned earlier, the kind of quest equivalent in this game are called Toon Tasks, and some of them are actually like really fun and have lots of little interesting lore. Some of them are just tedious to get through, but some of them are super funny if you're actually paying attention to the dialogue that is going on as you complete the tune task. And some of them involve like really cool or interesting things in order to get certain achievements. So I alluded to doodles in the intro. Doodles are these pets that you can buy in various neighborhoods throughout the game and you can train them to like tune you up. So that, that means heal basically. So you can train them to heal you and you can also summon them in battle to heal you, but they're kind of useless. Like it just takes so much effort to get even a modicum of a possibility that they'll actually do it, but they're very cute and I love them. And that's all I have to say about doodles for now. So I know a lot of people don't particularly like gardening or at least flower gardening because that is the one aspect of this game that 
you can't max out immediately. It has to take months because they refresh every day. But I think some of the flowers that you can grow in Toontown are very beautiful and they look nice around your house and they have funny names. So they've got that going for them. And speaking of maxing out your tune, it's hard to catch all 70 fish, but fishing is a really fun activity. It's definitely the easiest way to earn money in the game. And there are a bunch of silly fish. Oh my God, they're so, there's just, they're amazing. I love the fish in this game. And it's like a nice relaxing activity to just go fishing, get some jelly beans, which are the currency in this game, and yeah. I really like fishing. All right, now I'm going to get into the technical elements of this game, which include the storytelling and writing, the art style and character design, the setting and world building, the gameplay, and the sound and music. Storytelling and writing. I think that while the, the plot is not the main focus of this game, either in the side quest tune tasks or the main tune tasks you get to kind of move your tune along. I do think that the concept of this wacky, zany, mythical tune town being overrun by these corporate killjoys and these tunes having to take to the streets and like a civilian militia to fight back is a really interesting concept. And it's kind of ironic given what Disney has become since this game's inception as a mega corp conglomerate themselves. But that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to mention that I think that the plot, while not the focal point of this game, is a really engaging aspect of it. I also think that the writing on a more like concrete level, just like things that the NPCs say to you and the cogs say to you and just all of that kind of stuff is like appropriately irreverent. It kind of gives me Sam and Max vibes, but for a way toned down audience or even kind of Looney Tunes like Bugs Bunny vibes, just it's very witty and sarcastic, but also just off the wall and kind of like, what, what did I just read? And I really like that tone for the game. Art style and character design. So I mentioned this earlier, but the graphics of this game have not aged well. It is a low poly game, as were many 3D games at the time, but even for the time, it was particularly low poly. Lots of clipping, lots of weird camera angles in the battles for some reason that just make absolutely no sense and are like just blocking your view, but it really has charm. I just, I can't imagine it looking any other way, you know? I can't imagine the 2D sprites that are awkwardly mixed in with the 3D buildings on the streets to be perfectly rendered 3D assets or for all of the animations to not clip through each other constantly. I don't know, it's just, I, it's probably purely nostalgia that I love the look of this game so much and don't really want a better version of it, but it, it has charm, but it's definitely not like, god tier level graphics for the time or just in general. And like I mentioned earlier, even though the animations clip to hell and back, there's still a lot of character in the animations, whether it's the emotes like bowing, curtsying, dancing, all that kind of stuff, or the actual attacks during battle. I think they're really well done. It's just the models are kind of shitty. <laughs> Setting and world building. So the way that this game is set up is that there are a bunch of neighborhoods. They start in Toontown Central, then you go to like Donald's Dock, Daisy's Garden, Minnie's Melody Land, etc. You go to all these different themed neighborhoods as your tune progresses and gets higher level. And I think that that system is really interesting and I do like the themes of certain neighborhoods. Daisy's Garden is definitely my favorite, but I also really like the Berg. Berg? The Berg? I don't know where Pluto is supposed to be. It's this like frosty themed neighborhood. And each neighborhood, so it has like the playground, which is kind of the main area where you're not gonna get attacked and you have stores and all that kind of stuff. And then it has streets, which is where you can go find cogs to battle. And the streets are filled with these shops and shopkeepers that have the funniest and punniest and just smartest names in the world. Like they are, they are just, so funny and it's just a joy to be running around even though you probably wish you could be teleporting to get to places faster but it's a joy to be running around and to just see these hilariously named buildings especially when they get taken over by the cogs because cogs can take over buildings so it's like whatever absurd tune store name with like ink at the back at the end of it it's just very funny gameplay so like many MMOs, the gameplay in Toontown can be kind of grindy. It's like I mentioned earlier, it takes minimum several months to max gardening if you want to like fully max out your tune. And some of the hobbies you can do like golfing and kart racing are just not very fun, or at least not fun to me. I know there are some people who really like them. It just takes a long time. It doesn't really take a long time to complete all of the tasks 
to get through all the neighborhoods, but it takes a long time to max your gags, your weapons. And since it's turn-based combat, it just, it can really take forever. So that's kind of a downside to this game is that after you're past probably the first three, maybe four neighborhoods, it's just a bit of a grind fest to get through if you want to be making it to these higher level boss battles and maxing out all your gags. My main tune, my highest level tune, I still don't have max tune up because I'm just too lazy to go and like train with other people. So yeah, I'm a kind of, I'm ashamed to tune kind. Despite the fact that the gags take a bit of a long time to max out, the battle system is really fun. I like that it's turn-based because it involves a lot of strategy rather than just hacking and slashing or shooting people like first person or third person shooters tend to be. And you also get to coordinate with other players if you are like playing in a team because you can have four people to a side in a battle. So based on what gags they're using, you can like coordinate strategies and it's just really fun. I also think that the playground system that I was talking about during the setting portion of this review is a really interesting way to delineate levels. I remember I played Pirates of the Caribbean Online and Wizard 101 and they kind of had similar things where it's like you go to different islands or different lands every time you kind of reached a certain level threshold. It's somewhat linear, but there's also like literally the layout of Toontown is not linear so you can go explore other places before you're necessarily ready to and that kind of stuff. And I just think it's an interesting system to corral players <laughs> into certain parts of the game at appropriate levels. One thing to know, and this is kind of par for the course with MMOs, which sucks for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of friends who play these kinds of games, is that it's very hard to max or beat the game completely on your own. These days there are usually a couple hundred or thousand people on Toontown Rewritten, which is a private server that was created after Disney shut down the original game, but it can be hard to find people at certain times to like help you get things done. It's just a little bit frustrating because you can't solo mission everything, but it's a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. It's not just an online role-playing game, it's you have, the whole point of it is to play with other people, so but I know as a kid that was a big frustration because my brother and I couldn't take down everything by ourselves. So we just kind of had to wait a lot. There are certainly tools online like forums and discord and stuff where you can meet people and communicate, but yeah, it's just, it's really a game meant to be played with friends. Sound and music. The music for this game is absolutely iconic. So each neighborhood has at least two songs, one for the playground and then one for the streets. Each COG HQ has its own music, each Battle has a certain music, cog buildings. There is just so much great music in this game. I'm most partial to the uh, Daisy's Gardens music, although the Donald's dock music is very pirate-like, so that's also really fun. And the cog music, as much as they might be boring corporate blobs of people. They have some killer music, I must say. Very spooky, very techno. I really like it a lot. In addition to the music, the sound effects in this game are super well done. All of the tunes, different species, they have these little grunts and sounds they make that are appropriate to their species. The cogs talk in this kind of jarbled, blah, 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 almost like the adults and peanuts type voices and the various gags and attacks and other things throughout the universe also have really fun sound effects that really fit the kind of toony feel of this tune universe. Before I wrap this video up, I wanted to discuss some similarities that this game has with other media. The most obvious would be with other Tooniverse set animated Disney properties, such as Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Bonkers, the recent Mickey Mouse shorts, and of course DuckTales. Another game I think that this game has some similarities to, not at all in gameplay, but just in terms of world building, would be Cuphead. They're both set in these cartoony universes, albeit inspired by slightly different eras in animation. I would say Cuphead is definitely golden age with a little bit of the kind of rubber hose and like uh, 20s silent animation thrown into the mix. Whereas this definitely feels more, it, it has those elements of the golden age of cartoons for sure, but it also has kind of later 70s, 80s, 90s in it influences as well. So my final thoughts on this game are that I absolutely love it. It was my introduction into the furry fandom as I mentioned in another video so it'll always hold that place in my heart. Some of it's probably nostalgia, 
Okay, a lot of it's probably nostalgia, but I genuinely think that this game has a lot of heart put into it and a lot of love in the community, especially. I mean, this game has been defunct for almost 10 years now. I think it shut down in 2013 and there's still a huge community playing on private servers of the game or spinoffs of the game. There's another private server called Toontown Corporate Clash that takes the game and makes it into something completely new with a lot of different combat elements. I think it's just, it has a good story Story. It has good gameplay. It has just a lot of heart in it and I really enjoy it and Yeah, it will always hold a very special place in my heart. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!